My name is Jana. I am 35 and my husband's name is Jordy. We have a daughter whose name is Henley. So when Henley was born, everything was fine. We had a pretty boring, unremarkable pregnancy. Um, you know, just nothing really to note. I mean, I wasn't that sick. Uh, you know, all the tests came back great. All the, like the ultrasounds looked wonderful. She was born, really easy birth. I mean, I was induced, but like there was no real medical complication for that. She came out pretty quickly. Everything was fine. We went home and then um, two weeks later, she just sort of stopped eating one day. And I'm a very, actually a very anxious person. So we called the doctor and the doctor was like, well, you probably should bring her the ED just because like she's so young, but like it could be a variety of things that are not really that important. Like she wasn't breathing as well. Her oxygen was going down. So they called the NICU people who were like on a different floor, came down, kind of got her situated. You know, they weren't really sure what was wrong with her. Like her test didn't look that weird. They were just still trying to figure out what the problem was. Um, but they were doing like spinal taps. They were doing like everything just to see. They thought maybe it was meningitis. Like they really didn't know. Um, and then all of a sudden she just like turned blue. Uh, so they obviously were very concerned about that. They were like, we don't have the capacity to deal with this. We're gonna send her to the cardiac unit downtown. Uh, they're gonna know what to do with her. <clears throat> so we went downtown and for the first two weeks we were there, they like really didn't know. They were doing all these different tests. They were running genetics. Like they were trying to figure out why her heart didn't seem to be working that well, um, but they couldn't really figure it out. They extubated her and that went really poorly. So then they like re-intubated her and then like on a Monday, they were saying, well, she's actually looking a little better. I think like Wednesday, we'll try to extubate her again. Things go well, you guys should be home by like the weekend. Um, and then Tuesday night, she just de decompensated and like she turned gray, like all her stats were really bad. They basically, like she was dying. Um, and so they said, you know, we're gonna try our best to medically support her, but like we really can't anymore. So if she makes it through the night, then we're gonna have to like do some serious, um, you know, we're gonna have to, we have to make some serious moves, but um, if like, it may be that she's not gonna make it through the night. So if she gets any worse, we're gonna have to put her on ECMO, um, which is, you know, really dangerous and not like a long-term solution and like things you wanna avoid. Uh, so the two of us, we weren't really supposed to, but we both like basically stayed in the ICU all night. She made it through the night. And then they basically said, you know, we don't know what's wrong with her, but her heart isn't working. So we're gonna put her on a fad. So like her, she needs a, we don't know yet whether she needs one on one side or one on both sides. We don't know. Um, and the only one appropriate for her age and her size is this thing called the Berlin heart, which is basically like an, an external machine. Like she's not big enough to have something implanted. So like, you're going to have to live here while she's on this. Um, and then uh, she's probably going to need a transplant. So we need to list her. Um, and so that was, I mean, that's difficult for anyone to hear, but I mean, we went from like 24 hours prior to being like, we're going home this weekend to now like she needs a transplant. Um, and then in the meantime, we're gonna put her on this really scary device. Um, I also thought <laughs> incorrectly, I thought uh, when they said Berlin heart, I thought of the, um, the iron lung from like way back when. So in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, she's gonna be in this like tube. Like it was just, I mean, it wasn't, it didn't make it less or more scary, but I was just, I was misinformed in a way that uh, I didn't really know I was, so it was extra scary. Um, so yeah, I mean, they went to work. Two days later, she had her Berlin heart put in and then she was listed. Um, and the Berlin heart is a great device, but it doesn't come without its own risks, um, one of which is stroke. Um, the woman who runs the bad program at Children's uh, has come up with a new way of different medication for like blood thinner and things like that. So she has single-handedly reduced stroke risk quite a bit, uh, but you know, it's still obviously um, a concern. And so from the time that she, they implanted the surgery, they won't put you on blood thinners right away because you're in surgery. Um, and so, but the time between when they put it in and when they started her blood thinner, which I think was like 12 hours, she did have a stroke. Um, it was small um, and so far has had like no effect on her, but like, we didn't know that at the time. So, and that's a pretty common thing. Like, as I've talked to other parents who've been on the Berlin, like a lot of the kids have had strokes. Some of them have been, had more impact, like long-term impact than others. Um, 
but it's sort of, it's an interesting place to be because you don't really have any choices. So it's not like we're going through these long decision trees about like, should we do this surgery? Should we not? Should we implant this? Should we not? It's like, well, she's going to die. So you need to do this. And so like whatever risks come with it, we're just going to manage them the best we can, which in some ways is easier because like, I don't have any control of this. So like, it just is what it is and we'll just have to manage it. But she actually recovered like pretty well. She was on the Berlin for four months and then she was transplanted at five months. And then we spent another five weeks in the hospital after that because she was on so much sedation medication for so long that it took a really long time for her to safely wean off of uh, all of it. 